Svetlana, what do you think would kill you first in the vacuum of space? Daleks, Cybermen, Slovene. Hmm. I'm here with Svetlana to see if science fiction gets it right when putting humans in the vacuum of space. In science fiction, it's not uncommon to get sucked out or forced out of your spacecraft. And it's not a pretty sight when you do. A common side effect of science fiction vacuum exposure is that our bodies will explode. But thankfully, that wouldn't happen. Our body's made of sturdy stuff. Our skin wouldn't let that happen. But our bodies will expand because of a lack of pressure. We can do a demonstration to show what would happen if we take pressure away from humans. We'll need a plastic syringe and some mini marshmallows. The marshmallow grows bigger because its internal pressure is trying to match the low air pressure around it, causing the air pockets in the marshmallow to expand. And where do we have air inside our bodies? In our lungs. So don't hold your breath as your lungs will explode. A lack of pressure causes ebulism, formation of bubbles in bodily fluids. When the pressure on a liquid is reduced, its boiling point lowers. So we might start to feel the liquid on our eyes and our mouths start to bubble and evaporate and our bodies will start to expand. But don't worry, don't worry. About 15 seconds in, we'll pass out due to a lack of oxygen. It is this lack of oxygen that will eventually kill you. Now that's a really good question, Svetlana. Would we freeze? No, freezing to death should not be a main concern either. There are three ways to make heat go from one place to another. Conduction, which is touching something, convection, which is fluids moving around, like in liquids or gases, and radiation, where emitting light. As you are in the vacuum of space with no air, liquid or solid for it to travel through, there is just radiation. Our bodies radiate heat, but this happens very slowly, so it wouldn't be your main concern. So how do astronauts in real life stop these bad things from happening? Well, they use spacesuits or pressure suits, like Svetlana here. Spacesuits in sci-fi films and TV shows all look pretty high-tech, but would they work? One quite similar to Svetlana here is the orange suit appearing several times throughout Doctor Who. Svetlana here is a Soviet pressurisation suit from around the 1960s, but versions of her are still in use today, like the so-called suit astronauts wear to and from the International Space Station. Like we've got Tim Peake and Helen Sharman's so-called suits on display here at the National Space Centre. Spacesuits are pressurised with air, Svetla, are you finished? Okay, so I just got OM. So in the so cold suits like Tim and Helen's and Svetlana here, they have this big kind of rubber sack. And this rubber sack can be filled with air, which puts pressure on the body, kind of like it's our own Earth's atmosphere surrounding us. And you'd fold this big kind of hole that you climb through, fold it all together, and secure it with this elastic band here. Might not look like much, but this is what keeps you alive in space. And you secure it all the way around, and that will keep all the air and all the pressure inside your suit. Now this is where sci-fi suits differ. So in real life, we pressurise our space suits. I'm going to demonstrate this with our arm spoon here. So I pop this on my arm, and like our space suits, we fill it with air. It's putting pressure on our bodies, which is great, what we need to survive, but also makes it really difficult to move. Which is why, on a film set, you won't see any pressurised spacesuits. Because as an actor, you're not going to be comfortable moving around. It just makes a lot more problems than it's worth. So being sucked out into the vacuum of space might not be as horrific or as gory as films and TV might make you think, but it's definitely something you don't want to happen in real life. So when you go on your space travels, don't forget your spacesuit. Can, can you help me?